we're back painting this little Santa Fe piece. And I'm going to start, I was originally going to have morning glories here, but then I decided to switch woman's prerogative to a Thumbergia vine. And that may be something not many of you have heard of, but it's a really pretty, it's a purple flower. And I'm using, I showed you my color mixtures. I'm using combinations of ultramarine blue plus white and ultramarine blue plus dioxanine purple plus white and then dioxanine purple plus white. So I'm just using several different mixtures and this just makes some really pretty blue purples that look really nice with this little phthalo blue gate. And this drapes down. It's a lot like the morning glory. It's just the flowers are a little different shaped. But the morning glory flowers are a lot like the petunias, which are down below. So I thought, well, instead of having the same shaped flowers, let's do something a little bit different. And so it's not so repetitive. And again, there's just, I use, I have several different values mixed out on my palette, as you could see on the initial, one of the initial images I sent you. And this purple will look really pretty with the phthalo blue gate. It will also look really nice with that yellow. I'm going to have a yellow chair here. A little Mexican chair. Southwest style chair. And that purple and yellow are complementary colors. They're across from each other on the color wheel. So they, the purple will make the yellow appear brighter. That's a lot of the secret to the vibrant colors in my paintings, is I use a lot of that complementary colors juxtaposed or next to each other. And that really helps give a vibrancy to the paint, to the painting. You can see I'm using this square brush and I just use the corner corner of my brush to shape my flowers. I block in my fold, my flower color first and then the, the foliage last. I'm going to let one of these kind of just come down over, over my little opening there. That just helps to give the feeling of depth People love these draping vines. Don't you love it when you go into a garden and there's vines draping? And just it, just as a neat. Gives a nice feel. I'm going to have a little vine or a little uh, little tile there. You see that a lot in Santa Fe, the little Mexican tiles or, or Southwest tiles um, in walls and all kinds of different things on them. I'm, I'm thinking about having a little sun face on this one, but it's just like my morning glory vine. I always have women's prerogative, or really it's artist's prerogative, to, to make changes. Just whatever my heart says to do, I follow. You can see I put a lot of different colors in here. The light's coming from the upper right. Right now I'm not just paying a whole lot of attention to that. I will as I, I get further along, but we'll have a little lighter flowers in here. Okay, now I'm going to start with my foliage. And the leaves are combinations of viridian green plus just a tiny bit of cadmium yellow medium and then some white. And then I also have a mixture of my phthalo blue plus liquid that I add into the foliage for just some uh, coolness in the, the depths of the foliage. So then I start bringing my leaves in here. This makes a nice rich green. A 
And now this is some of that phthalo blue plus the liquid. Just gives me a nice cool dark within the depths of the foliage. I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush now. get in between the, uh, don't want to totally take out my flowers. By painting in this sequence, by doing my flowers first and then the leaves, it, let me show you what happens here. When I paint that green, see how that picks up some of the purple on the brush? I don't know how well you can see that. But it picks up some of the purple on the brush. So then if I kept back painting, it would make my green, it would, my green gets dirty. Well, if I painted the green first and then the purple, I would make my purple colors muddy. Hope that makes sense. So there is method to, the re there's a method, there's a reason why I do that. A little, now I'm adding some light into these leaves. I will have to go back and add more onto the flowers. But right now I'm just getting my greens and getting my canvas covered. Well, I just dropped a tissue on the floor with paint all in it. Oh, fortunately it landed paint side up, so didn't get didn't get paint on my painting mat. I have a mat that I stand on. One of my collectors got this for me and it's one of those gel pro mats and oh my goodness gracious. I have happy feet at the end of the day. It really really makes a difference on my legs, my feet, and my back. Ed Marhanka. Just a really wonderful collector of mine. He started collecting my paintings in 1995, I think it was. I was in a gallery in Santa Fe called the Marcus Gallery, and he bought, he was the second person who, I had just started with the gallery, and he was the second person who bought my paintings in the gallery. And we ended up selling a lot of paintings in that gallery. But, uh, Ed is just, we call him our Team Sin Carrot Captain, and the reason why is after he bought his painting, and it was a large piece, he wrote Jack and I, that was before internet and email and all that stuff, he wrote us a note and said, I just, Mickey's paintings are so happy that I think, you know, I just call them billboards of happiness. Well, Jack immediately he gave us his phone number and we called him and we said, oh my gosh, can we use that? Jack said, I will make you a Team Sin Carrot Captain if you'll let us use that. So my paintings ever since, we have used Ed's term, billboards of happiness. And that's one comment that we hear so often is people say, oh, your paintings make me so happy, which just makes my heart sing. Because that's that's what I want. I want people to look at my paintings and just smile and if they're not having a good day, they can look at my painting and make them feel better. I don't care if I ever hang in museums or whatever. If I have collectors and my paintings are making them happy, that's my goal is fulfilled. God allows me the privilege and has given me ability to celebrate his beauty on canvas and I just want to share that with with other people. Now I'm coming back with my purples and you can see now I'm just laying this color on the canvas. It uh, you have to be careful not to just go back in and dig up the color because if you do, you're going to dig up the green and you're going to make your flower colors really muddy. I'll show you here. So say I come back and I really start laying, you know, pushing it in there. See how I get green in my brush? Let's see, I think. 
See how that green shows? That and see how muddy that got? That's what I don't want to do. I have to gently lay I'm gonna put some green back there. I'm just knocking everything off. Anyway, I'm coming back. Now I'm going to just lay my flower color on top of the on top of that green. See how that stays nice and clean? So that's, now that's, and since the light's coming in from the upper right, these flowers here are going to have a little more light hitting them. Mix a little more of my blue, my ultramarine blue and white. So I want some little blue tones in there too. This is how I do these flowers. I'm just going to do this batch here because this just shows you. I want to show you how I do the pull the vines down and do the centers. Keep this from getting too long. Now, bring my little vines down. I get my little, this is called a fine liner brush. And I can just use this then to bring my little vines down. And I want to, I need to make a little lighter mixture of that. And I'll just mix a little white into that viridian green plus cadmium yellow medium plus a little white. I just added a little more white to it. And this just gives us and see that white vine just that shows up against that dark background. And these are cascading over this roof. I'm going to have one coming up here. And I'm going to let it break out over the wall there. That just again helps give that feeling of depth. I can just brace my hand on the canvas here and clean that up. That paint, I still have my paint all mixed, or my mixtures of paint from the wall. But that just gives, helps give the feeling of depth. Bring these vines over. There's going to be one back here. Okay, that's that. Now I need to add the centers on the flowers. And I'm going to do this with a little bit of alizarin crimson. And I just mix some alizarin crimson with liquid. is called a round brush. This is one of the few brushes I use that's not a um, the, br the bright, the square brush. This is a round and it makes a nice point. And this then I can add the centers into these flowers. I'm just bracing against the unpainted part of the canvas. And that just gives that alizarin crimson just gives a nice kind of a little red into that deep red into those purple, blue purple flowers, which is a nice. And then I add a few little just like buds here and there add some interest. And by holding your brush back on the 
in the long handle toward the tail end of it actually gives you a little more control. If you hold it right up at the ferrule near the bristles of the brush, your hand, the shake of your hand is transmitted directly into the brush. Whereas if you hold it back, any jiggling you have kind of works out by the time it gets to the end of the brush. I know people have said they don't understand how I can hold the brush that way or use it that way, but again, it's all individual, but they make the long handles for a reason, and that's one of them. In fact, that's the only reason I know about, but I guess also so that long handle, you can put it in your thinner bucket and still grab your, grab your brush. It seems like that makes some sense. So. But that's how we do the Thumbergia vine. If you want to look it up on Google, it's a beautiful vine, and it's spelled T-H-U-N as in Nancy, B-E-R-G-I-A. It's just a really pretty vine. And, um, so anyway... Thank you for watching my YouTube videos. I really appreciate that. And do subscribe to my channel because you'll get an email every time that I post a new video. Also visit my blog. I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting as well as others I do. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my video. And you can also subscribe to that and then you will get an email every time I post a new new uh, blog. So thank you again, and you just have a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy painting!